this is part two of a video about the Starlane uh, WID B uh, data logger. Um, I wanted to get one installed so that I could improve my, you know, get more information about my track writing and improve my performance at the track. Um, I, in my last video, I did the unboxing and the installation. Today, I'm going to go through some of the analysis of uh, what it looks like to use the software and what kind of information that you can get. Um, I was supposed to go to the track. I think it was like one week after I did the installation, I went to the track, but my race bike was too loud. You know, and France has pretty uh, loud, you know, loudness restrictions now, so I wasn't able to ride. Um, but a few weeks later, I was. Uh, so the videos I'm gonna show, uh, the still on the video, are from Cremona in Italy. Um, really enjoyed the time there. So, on the screen, uh, this is me. I'm, uh, I don't remember which corner that is, of course, but uh, this is me going around one of the corners. Really enjoyed it. And if I look at the video, so I will play the video and talk about a few of the things that I noticed in the video. Now, I didn't get this video until after the whole session was done, but it, it's a great means for me to talk about things in the video. You know, I talk about um, ways I could learn at the track and such. Um, so here you see me coming around a corner, nothing special there. Um, one thing I was curious about was lean angle. Uh, so you can see I, I have some lean angle to me. I was curious how much was that. I'm also curious, when am I getting on the gas? Uh, am I rolling on the right way? You'll probably notice by the sound, I got on a little bit late. You might have seen my front wheel come off, so I'm at least accelerating, but I think I'm coming on uh, too late. Um, I'm also curious, you know, the video doesn't show it, but I'm also curious uh, how hard am I braking? Um, can I see that? How hard am I accelerating and such? And then just other general things about the, the bike. So let's get into looking at the actual data. Uh, I have the Starline software loaded and I'd like to do some analysis. I'm not gonna show the copying of the data from the bike. Uh, if you've got the Starline, uh, then you already know how to do that. Um, when you do the import, it just brings in all the ex extra data from the WIDB device. Under analysis, you can see I've already broken my sessions down uh, for Kermoda. And let's go ahead and look through. Uh, my runs and such are a bit out of order, but uh, my sessions are good. Uh, had the best time. This is the best lap that I had. Uh, 1 minute 39. Uh, 0.54. Uh, so let's go ahead and do some analysis of that. Um, let's see if I double click that. That brings me into the editor. Here I'm able to see the, the data that I was hoping to see with this data logger. Uh, down below here you can see a little version of the track. Um, I probably can find a way to get that overlaid on top. Uh, for now, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but here, I'm looking at that single map, you know, the single lap. And there's a few different things I can do. Um, like, let's go look at channel analysis. <coughs> Here we can see, uh, on the left, I've got RPM, uh, throttle position, and what my actual GPS speed was. Uh, you can see my peak speed up here, uh, if I click on GPS. Uh, my peak speed was around 260 or so. Uh, I think I can actually bring it up there, so about almost 260 on that particular lap. If I look at my throttle position, this was something that I learned earlier, uh, in the, earlier in the day. So I, this this was, here was a good lap, uh, not you know, the best of the day. Uh, on the back straight, you can see uh, I was getting up to a hundred you know, percent throttle, ninety nine point two according to the bike, uh, and then of course I I get off the really quick. What I'm curious about though is, you know, I wanted to improve. So let me close this view and go back to, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. 
Yes, yes. It always asks that question. All right, analysis. Uh, I want to go to the first day. What was one of the slower laps? Let's do the 144. That was session five. Let's go look at that. We'll even we'll go ahead and pick the fastest lap, which is five seconds slower than my five and a half seconds, almost slower than my best lap on the second day. Here again, you see throttle position, RPM, things like that. What I wanted to see, though, this is the first corner, second corner, third corner. Um, so if you remember on the video when I came around and then I started accelerating down, um, and even where I was lifting the front wheel off, that's this little section right here. So first thing I want to see, coming around that corner, good, I'm getting off the, th the throttle completely. That was something that I used to make a mistake on. I would hold some throttle through. So this verifies I'm letting off the throttle as I'm going through uh, my corners. But when I start, you know, I get, hit my apex, I'm getting on a little bit and I'm kind of getting on the throttle and then I'm really getting on the throttle. What it shows me is I needed to get on the throttle a little bit sooner. You know, af after I've hit the apex and I'm on the throttle, I need to get on that throttle sooner. So that was something I noticed. Uh, this is coming around. I'm like, let, let me see if I can. Come on, there we go. Here, uh, actually, I can do that. Uh, on the video, this was me coming around here. You, it shows me as I uh, come around, come around, and then this little yellow dot. It was in this area that I was getting my. You know, I got my front wheel off the ground. But on, on here, you're going to notice right away, I'm really on the brakes quick. Yeah, I, you don't see the brake here, but you see I'm off the throttle, and I'm really coasting a long way before I get into this corner. Off the throttle, that's good, but why did I do that so fast? And then as I come around here, I'm on the throttle a little bit, off again for that next corner, on the throttle a little bit, not much really, come around on the throttle down here, but hardly at all. I mean, you see I'm hardly even making 43%. You know, so that showed me I had a lot that I needed to improve. On this particular run, look at my straight. I'm on the, the back straight. I'm not even doing full throttle. So those were mental notes to me of things I needed to change. Um, I was also curious, so that, that's in, that was for me to improve and I'll, I'll go back and look at the, the good lap a bit later. Uh, I was just curious, you know, I'm doing a channel analysis, what else can I look at? Let's turn speed and throttle position off. And what else can I show just for the fun of it? Water temp. I never realized that my water temperature changes so much while I'm going through uh, any given lap. So that I found interesting. Uh, the air temperature. It was hot out, and so if I select air temperature here, you know, it was between 53, 54 degrees uh, Celsius. So what is that in Fahrenheit? I don't know. Uh, I'd have to Google it. You can figure it out if you're interested. Uh, lean angle was another thing. Wow. I didn't realize my lean angle was that. I thought I was doing like 50 or 51 on this one. Good grief. All right. Can I make that map any bigger? I don't know. Well, if I start here. This was just before that where my wheel comes off the ground, you know, right, right in here is where I was bringing my wheel off the ground. But that corner just before, wow. Okay, 57.7, yeah, I'm not actually doing that. You can see here, 51, that's more like it. 49, 48, so I don't know why it says my max is 57. Maybe it's the zoom or something? I don't know. 
In any case, I'm getting over pretty good. I'm getting past 45 because a lot of riders have problems. When, when, once you get past 45 degrees, that's when you begin to feel the G-forces more on the bike. And getting further and further, it's, it's not this normal feeling when you're riding the bike because you're being pushed into the seat. You're pushing, you know, you're compressing the, rear, uh, the front and rear shocks as you're going through the corner. It, it's not a normal uh, feeling. You have to get used to it. So you can see if I've, I've overcome that already because I'm past 45. This, though, was indicating to me I probably could lean more. I'm, of course, no Rossi or no Marquez, but I could probably do a little bit more. Uh, let's see, anything else? Um, somewhere I've got the lateral Gs. I think this is the lateral. No, not that. Da -da -da. External battery RPM. I thought I had g-forces i don't see it on here right now um, i did it again let's go look at the fast lap now and see if i improved at all and i of course hit the wrong button and closed the whole thing So analysis, and down here, the 139, that was my fastest lap. Let's double click it. Oh, not there. Double click the lap. And as you see, I was I spoke earlier, I wanted to get on the throttle a little bit. Unfortunately here, even though this, this was my fastest lap, I still wasn't getting on the throttle as much. Um, that video you saw where I was um, pull, pulled the wheelie just a bit, you can see I was getting close to 100%, but honestly not really. Um, and if you look at the straight, I am definitely getting on at 100%. What I don't know is why it takes me so long to roll the throttle on. I guess I'm still fearful, um, but just for fun, let's not look at that one. So that was the fast one. Ooh, I should be able to do a lap comparison. Do do do. So. see on the lap before I actually got on the throttle earlier um, and held it at 100% longer that was good and you see that my top speed was actually slightly faster on on that previous lap uh, if I look at the next fastest lap up here you know, I'm all about the same that one, I, for whatever reason, I even rolled off the throttle a little bit before getting on. I didn't really hold it all that much. It's kind of funny. There, double click it, that's how you do it. So there's my reference. Uh, let's pick one of the slower ones. You see there, earlier I was getting on sooner and harder. Um, don't really know. You can see up here are the gear changes. I'm on the throttle. I get up to around well, 13 some odd. Let's see, where am I getting? I get to 13,000 RPM ish and change gears, drops. I come back up to around 13,000. The, the bike red lines at 14. I think it's 14. Maybe 14.5. I, I could take it higher. But yeah, you can at least see it down here. Uh, I'm on the throttle. And there's my top speed. Uh, to get any faster, I'm just going to have to have either a different gearing. I'm stock gearing. Or I'm going to have to have a longer track. Uh, at Mugello, my current top speed is 
282. Uh, so I think I just need more time. We also look here, that corner that I'm coming from. I'm starting this corner at 70 kilometers an hour. Uh, you know, that would be another thing to do is find a way to get more speed through that corner uh, before getting on the straight. Uh, but there's a lot of things. It's not just the fast. It's Again, it's looking over here. I'm not getting on the throttle hard. I should be getting on harder. Um, here again, not getting on the throttle all that hard. So every time I come out of a corner, I've got to be on the throttle harder. This is exactly what I was looking for and why I bought the, uh, the Whidbey. Um, and I'm hoping with time that you are going to find that I am improving my track speed. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I um, Maybe it will be something that you want to go and purchase yourself. Um, if you like it, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. So, thank you.